parched. What was that? Uh, so was you going to sing a special tonight or something? Huh? <clears throat> if I had a nickel for every distraction, you know, I've got a gift. I really do. Distractions don't distract me. But there are people that do get distracted. But, you know, grace to you. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, is that, that was you? Oh, okay. So just you were, yeah, toughing him up. But he's got his armor on. I mean, okay. Yeah. I'm shmuel with you, brother. You know what I mean? Uh, the rest of you? Eh, yeah, you're okay, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I know I am too, so, and you are? Any other? I am. Wow. He treated me like I was the one. Yeah. <laughs> I know, huh? He's got a big heart, you know. There's Jesus. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so, man, I got, like, some stuff. I got so much stuff. It's good. It's all good. But sometimes I gotta like, I gotta throw out a like, boom, you know, a tough one. But then when you hear where I'm going with it, it's always, oh, you know, I love my pastor because he's not one of those hell damnation preachers and end of the world, all that. He he actually knows what the apocalypse means, you know. No, listen. Anyway, all the left on in the on the west coast is safe because zombies are looking for brains. Oh, so, so God takes Adam into the garden, and he said, Adam, this is Eve. Uh, I want you to love her, cherish her, and take care of her. And Adam said, okay, got it. But who's that over there? God said, oh, that's Betty White. She was here when I got here. <laughs> Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Oh. Okay, what I want to talk about a little bit is really serious. But it's going to take us into a place so we can understand how we can position ourselves to really receive the miracles, to receive the promises, to receive the good things, to un understand why and how our Prayers can be answered, okay? And, I, and it, you know, this is like a lifetime teaching here, but I'm just going to, like, give it a small run on a Friday night, okay? But what I'm about to say is very important, the first things I'm going to share with you, because if I can, if I can, if I can capture just this first moment as we begin, I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit just to fall upon you and cause this to go beyond your thinking and go into your knower. If you understand what I'm saying is beyond your brain into your heart, okay, where your spirit is, so that it might be fruitful there and then bring understanding to your mind when you're going about your affairs, and especially in prayer and reading the Word and stuff like that, okay? And so what I want to talk about is the Lord and what the Lord means, or you could put it this way to some of you that's been around for a while, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I think we really miss that at times. We really don't, or we really forget to recognize Him for who He is and show Him the honor that is due Him. And listen, I have a saying, and I've 
had it for years, and some of you that's been with me for a long time will know the answer to this, just like 2 plus 2. But what does the Lord mean? Well, see? See how they just went right to that? Because if he's your Lord, then you understand he's the boss. Because the Lord, in everyday modern language, is boss. And this is why... You'll understand what I'm about to read to you and why Jesus said this to those that were his inner circle. Listen to what he says. Do you think Jesus minced his words? He's the eternal word of God. It was through him that all things were created and God chose him to come because he knew that his word would prevail because when God sends out His Word, it never returns to Him empty or void or incomplete, but always accomplishes and does everything that He sends His Word to do. Amen? And so Jesus looked at His followers in, in Luke 6.46. There it is read. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do the things which I say. Now, they were right next to him. He was watching them. He was able to see them. Ooh-wee. I'm glad we've got our defenses built up. Amen? All right. Yeah. But I'm going to pray for those who has a memory lapse about what they should do. Okay. Well... We've kind of dropped it, you know, uh, to a lower rate just to get what we can because we need every penny. <laughs> well, <laughs> but if you had money to go to the casino, <laughs> it's all a joke, so everybody just relax. <laughs> so. So you understand they're calling him Lord, Lord, but yet they're not doing what he's saying. So in other words, he's not boss, boss. You see that? Because you do what the boss says, right? Or at least in his presence, they're in his presence. How much more do we think we can get away with stuff now that he's just like not watching us every second? Wait a minute. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'm with you always. Matter of fact, he's living up. On the inside of us, he set up his abode with us, and you don't think he don't know what you do? He don't think? Why do you think God has a bad day once in a while? Man, if you had six million disobedient children all in the same day on the planet, that would be a bad day. <laughs> Jesus, I, I get it. I tell Papa I love him. So sometimes you just need to go and not have a list or anything and just say, God... I love you and thank you for your son because he's the greatest. Can you just do that? And he's my boss. So I'm going to listen because I know if Jesus said it, it's the Father's heart. We talk about that. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is begin to go down this thing. But I want you to keep in mind that when we say Lord, we better mean Lord. And we better practice Lord. In our life, because if we do that, then we will receive what comes with that. Now, let, let me stop right here for a second, because God's love for the human race is unconditional. But there are things in the scripture, there are promises that are based upon conditions. And if you follow the conditions that's laid forth, in other words, if you walk in obedience, those conditions will be met. And you'll receive the promises that he's made to you. And just the simple approach when you come to him and say, Lord, you better mean Lord. In other words, you better be recognized in him as the boss. Are you following him? Are you listening to what he's saying? Because that has a lot to do with how you're going to interact with him and you're going to receive what you're going for. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is no joke. This is no game. Some people say, I don't understand. I pray and it's like, God's not there. Well, what's going on in your life? What are you doing? Have you got things going on in your life that gives you a guilty conscience that would keep you from thinking that maybe you're worthy to receive God or hear God? And listen, it's not from his side. It's from your side, number one. 
But number two, coming into this, as we fulfill the things that we've been called to do, it will set us up for everything that God has promised to us. Are you sure about that, preacher? Yeah, I'm, I'm positive. Without a doubt. Now you guys got quiet on me. So I'm going to give you another heavy one. Matthew 7, 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now remember what I just said? If Jesus said it, I know it's the Father's heart. And so if Jesus is saying something and he's the Lord, Lord, okay, the boss, boss, or in other words, the boss of all bosses, the Lord of all lords, and he speaks a word, it's the Father's heart. You guys want to know what the will of God is for your life? Read the red. Listen, once you start having a red meat diet, you won't go back to the veggies. I guarantee it. It'll give you strength, baby. You'd be bench pressing 600 pounds before you know it, so to speak. But anyway, is it too heavy for you? So I gave you the sugar first so you guys could swallow this. But I want you guys to walk in the blessing. I want you guys to understand what it means when it says, so now when you read the scripture and you see Lord, I want you to stop and consider what is being said there. And how are we approaching him and what is he saying to us when we come to him and say, Lord, or even in the prayer, the Lord. All right? You guys getting this? Wait a minute. Let's give you a heavy one. You got Psalms uh, 23, 1 there? Bam, there it is. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So with the understanding of what I just gave you all, coming into this, is he the Lord of your life? Because if he is, then all of a sudden, this is to you. I shall not suffer any lack in my life. Because he is my Lord. Because I listen to him. He's the boss of my life. And I'm walking in step with him. And I'm going to follow him. And everything that he says, I'm going to do. Is that simple enough for you guys? Ooh-wee! You guys want the truth, right? You don't want a watered-down gospel, do you? Come on, talk to me, y'all. All right. Okay, so there is a whole bunch of promises there in Psalm. He's going to... Bring you into a, a place that is calm and is peaceful. And the green pasture has more than plenty there. He's going to give you help. Take away all fear even though you're walking through the valley that has no light. It's so dark there's no shadows there really. Because you've got to have some light to have shadow. They call it the valley, valley of shadow but it's the valley of no light. And when you're going through that place, he's going to be with you. And you'll have no fear because you see you're already surrendered to him. He's already taken it all from you. But that's if he's your Lord. So when we look at the scripture, we got to say, okay, you're my Lord. I'm making you Lord. I surrender. How much power is in that? How much power is in surrender? I'm talking to you all. Who's experienced it? Somebody just said that to me tonight. Since I surrendered, everything changed in my life. Hmm. She, she, she's like distracted, I know. But anyway, you can let her know later what I said. Distraction, see what I say? Devices, they, they, you know, we all got devices. But anyway, so once we surrender to him, truly, I was talking to my wife and she goes, yeah, but, because I, I, I got a, I got a word, and she goes, "Yeah, but you, are you doing it all the time, twenty four seven? No, shut up. <laughs> but at least I'm thinking about it most of the time. And sometimes it takes us a couple times to get going, huh, Ed? He's got to repeat it, doesn't he? Ooh, that's my Lord. Because I'm going to tell you something. You might miss an opportunity. Just like you're sitting here right now, and you might miss something I say." That might be crucial to your life. But you're somewhere else. But we come into the church and do that all the time. Don't we? Don't we dishonor God like that all the time? Diss him? What 
What if your governor came in or your president? Would you diss him? Yet there's somebody greater in the house right now. Don't diss him. Show him honor. Give him the glory that is due him. I know I'm serious tonight, but this is a serious matter. Because right now, we're talking about walking in faith, walking in life, walking in victory, rock, walking in the faith zone where the miracles happen. Because we're not hooked up to some powerless gospel that we just go to church and we have the, all these rules and regulations to make us feel good about ourselves so that someday when we die, we may go to heaven. That's a crock. He's empowered us to live in the spiritual life now, taking His kingdom forth and walking in true victory, walking in power, being an overcomer wherever we go. Listen, all preachers ain't going to preach to you like this. Some will, but a lot don't. But I will, because I want to be serious with you, and I want you to walk in the victory. I want you to have true power. I want you to understand it's just not a feel-good word, but there's more to it, because where the Word of God is, there is power. Amen. It's not empty, and it's not void, just like I said at the beginning. Hey, do we got part two up there? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll do one more. Maybe I'll do two, two more, and then we'll go to part two, and then we'll jump back. I didn't know if I was going to do part two or not, but I think I do, just because I'm on this subject. But I, Psalm 55, 2 says, cast your burdens on the Lord. Cast your burden on the Lord, and He will sustain you. Did that say the Lord? It said the Lord did. So we're coming to Him, recognizing who He is once again, and He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous. To be moved. We're going to talk about the righteous in a moment. The righteous that live by faith. You guys want to talk about that? But let's get our motor going over in this part two. You ready? Let's put up uh, 1 Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. I'm not saying that there's not a lot of word in the kingdom. The rhema word is full of power. It always is. It can't be delivered without being in power because it is the word of the Lord God himself. It is living word. But what that's saying there is it's just not a bunch of, of doctrine. It's not just a bunch of rules and regulations. But the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is shocked full of power. And where the power is, there's life. There's deliverance. What's some of the other things? There's healing. There's peace. There's righteousness. There's joy. There's things that will sustain you in every situation in your life so that you can go through it and not just maintain, not just survive, but thrive through the darkness. Be a light in the darkness. You know the thing is about in total darkness, one little match is a lot of light. But you know how we sing that song, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. You know what? The only one problem with that song is this. It's not a little light. Very good, Rhonda. Because this is the light of the life of Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world and He is the light of all men. And it's up to us whether we cover that or we let it shine. And so we're not going to hide it, are we? We're going to let the light of our boss shine through us because He is my Lord. Can you guys just do that with me? He's my Lord. He's my Lord. Ooh, I like the sound of that. He's my Lord, Sean. He's your He's your Lord. I know he's your Lord. Mm. So, Ed, first time next time. Next scripture. For our gospel, this is Paul talking to those boys over in Thessalonica, along with Timothy and one of his other ministers. I can't remember who it is right now. He said, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much 
assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. In other words, when they was there, they brought a gospel of victory, a gospel of power. When Paul got a hold of things, things shook loose. Things happened. My goodness, because he had an intimate relationship with the Lord. And he knew that the gospel was just not a bunch of theology. It just wasn't a bunch of doctrine, but it was the true power of God. That's why he writes to the Romans in 116, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, first the Jew and also to everybody else. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody else is me. Amen. Unless you're Jew, then you're first. But now you're just one of us. <laughs> so, verse 17, here we come. You ready? For in it, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ, just to clarify. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Do you know that one of the church reformers, many, many years ago, took this scripture right here, and he took it, and he nailed it on the door of the church. And Reformation started. His name was Martin Luther, and he did that October 31st, 1517. And something began to happen because he began to declare to the Catholic Church, you can't save people by them working for you, and they can't save themselves by works because the just will live by their faith, and they are redeemed by their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is righteousness back to them. And he wrote books and everything else. And out of that started the Reformation of the, all the churches that we have today that are called the, what are they called? <laughs> Other than Catholic, Protestant. <laughs> and then we had... Uh, then we had some, uh, uh, another thing happen like back in the, it started a little bit in the 1970s and then it got bigger than the 1980s and we had this whole group rise up. They call themselves non-denominational because they understood that denomination was uh, once again dividing, the, and denomination means to divide. That's what it means. That's, that name means division. So they rose up and said, we're not going to be a part of this division. And they became one of the biggest divisions. Division <laughs> I'm non-denominational. Oh, Jesus. I just got a relationship with my boss. I don't know what to tell you. Because the rest of it's a bunch of fooey and you don't want to get caught up in it. Because as soon as you think, I've been redeemed, I'm set free from all that religious stuff. And then we get over here and we form our own little religion. And we get like cultish and start acting alike and talking alike. Listen, I don't want nobody acting like me and talking like me. Unless God made you that way. Because you're supposed to be the way God created you to be. Not like me, or not like anybody else that influences your life, because they should be bringing you in a place of victory, and the, the one that you want to be like is the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's the one who's going to produce the life in you anyway. Maybe we can put a stop to this foolishness somehow, just by getting our eyes back on Jesus and quit, and quit looking at men and women that we want to idolize. It's okay to love people, and it's okay to have spiritual mothers and fathers. That's all right. But our mark is Jesus. He's the one. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Is this okay, you guys? You guys still feel all right? I'm going to say it again. For it, it is the righteousness of God that is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. Listen to what he says in, 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 in uh, Corinthians 10, 3. For we walk in the flesh, we do not walk war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds. Does anybody know what a stronghold is? Strongholds usually set up themselves in your mind. And you get a stronghold there and you'll believe it and it'll 
hinder you or sometimes, it, you know, if you have a righteous stronghold, it might take you in the right direction. But most of us have religious strongholds. Some of us have strongholds from the world, but the most dangerous ones are religious ones. Can you believe it? The devil is the most religious being I've ever laid eyes on. You see the devil? Well, kind of. He's manifested in many ways. But I don't, that's why I don't talk about him, because I don't care. If I talk about him, he might show up. I don't want to give him no glory. I'm going to talk about Jesus, and Jesus will show up. Talk about Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit will show up. Because Holy Spirit's going to drive out the darkness. He's going to drive out the demonic forces. He's going to drive out sickness. He's going to drive out the division. As a matter of fact, Holy Spirit will drive out religion. Even old-time religion. It, there, there was a time when they thought old-time religion was just okay. You mean that old-time religion? Well, you know what? I just want that relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what I think they were talking about when they said old-time religion. Because they wanted an encounter with God. That's why they'd go up in the mountains and they'd pray for days and they'd fast until the presence of God would f fall on them. Where they, and they would get drunk in the spirit and they'd get so drunk they couldn't even drive or walk or anything else. And they called that revival. It, just that they hung out and they sought God's face until he showed up in a way that just overwhelmed them. We sing about it today, but I don't even think most of us know what we're singing about. We need to experience God in that way. We need to seek his face until we have an encounter with God that will turn us upside down and change everything in our life and set us free from every bondage of hell and everything on this earth that would drag us down and be a hindrance or a stronghold. Now back to strongholds. Just in case you didn't get the stronghold part, verse 5 says, Casting down arguments. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So now you see, that's where it's at, the strongholds. And he will break that because we are armed to the teeth with the Lord Jesus Christ to bring down everything that comes against us because it's a spiritual attack. Let me, let, me, let me correct that. It's a supernatural attack against spiritual beings, okay? Because that supernatural is from the darkness. It's coming out to do battle with us. But we're equipped with the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's nothing greater than that. For he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. And you will walk victorious in him. So quit lollygagging. Quit, quit playing games. Get in line with your boss and start doing what he's commanded you to do. And start receiving the benefits that he has for you. Back to part one. Let's see, Psalms 103.2. Well, I'm just going to quote one, okay, because I don't have it here. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. What did it say? The Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. I will. He's talking to his soul. I will. Bless his holy name. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. There's a reason you don't forget. Because we remind him. It's not that he forgets either. He forgets our sin when we come in Jesus' name. But everything, but we remind him, telling him. That's why it's okay to pray again and again, reminding him. Lord, I've been bringing this before you. And this benefit has been promised to me. And you're my boss. You're my Lord. And I trust in you. And so, shall I just read them? Who, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. How many? You mean he's not holding the little one over here just in case and zap you with it? No, he doesn't do that. The other one does that. The other guy does that. Who crowns you with loving kindness loving kindness we don't even have a word like that only god's got a word like this loving God. he's kind in his love and tender mercies if you do a word search any of you that are bible scholars seek out tender mercies because it has all to do with the promises that come through the lord jesus christ and he satisfies your mouth with things no no, what does that say? Good. Did he say good? Satisfies your mouth with 
good things so that your youth is renewed. Rhonda, it gets more important the older we get. Any of you, no one over the age of, uh, now Rhonda's not there, but I am, over the age of 60. I used to read over all the stuff about old stuff. Mike, that would be you too. So all of a sudden, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. See, when you're that old worn out eagle and your feathers are all frayed and everything, you need all them feathers stripped out and the beak knocked off and everything else so that it can all come back brand new. So you can soar again instead of running around and around down here with all them turkeys. <laughs> That's one of the benefits that we have if He's our Lord. Remember, uh, remember the two that didn't faint at the promise of God? And uh, when God made the promise, they said, yes, we can take the land. Joshua and Caleb. And they outlived their entire generation that fell in the wilderness and they went with the young generation into the promised land and they led the way. And the Bible says that God restored their youth, that their eye didn't dim and their hand didn't shake even when they was holding that heavy sword. They marched in youth and they were old guys. But they didn't fall at the promise and they said, we can take the land. Though there be giants there, we'll slay the giants. You guys were hearing about slaying giants just a couple of days or yesterday, right? We can take the land. Why? Because the Lord God is my Lord. That's why. All right. I was going to do some other stuff, but I just went too long. I wanted to finish this one. So anyway, the communion table said, Audrey, will you come up here? You know that uh, she's been coming, hanging out. You told her she could come over. She said, I'll be back next Thursday. <laughs> You've been having a good time sitting over there with us. So the communion table is set. And we want you to come forward. And Audrey, I didn't give you a really good hug tonight. So. <laughs> I love you, dear. 